Hey everyone, Darren Benson again. I want to do a follow-up video to the Excel, the Renegade Excel video we did earlier. This is a drive-along video. This is our very first Renegade Excel. It is on the Freightliner Cascadia. There's not too much difference between this and the Classics and the uh, Explorers. The biggest difference would be kind of this layout right here. So this does have 360 cams. Uh, that's reverse cam. So I can run this side view. That's kind of a funky view right there. Uh, probably going to take a little bit to get used to. Um, just kind of preference wise, I'm just kind of old school. I would rather just have the reverse. Uh, we can just simply do the reverse. Um, it doesn't have a very far vantage point or basically you know it doesn't broadcast very far back behind the coach so it's, it would take somebody to get right up on you before you would see them uh, it does have a separate piece down here and basically this is solely intended for uh, as a even though we have navigation here we have navigation within this and we do have a backup monitor so uh, they didn't have any inputs, any, any additional inputs on the overhead with that being a, a 360 cam setup. In fact, let me go to 360 cams. Um, oh. So you can kind of see what goes on there. Uh, you can see a little bit, you know, once you go in reverse, probably a little bit better. In fact, it's probably where you want to be right there, so that way we can see a good distance back behind us. Um, so you can see the approaching cars there. Basically, to activate anything, just touch down there on the bottom, change everything up. Um, but if we go all the way there, I think that's probably where you want to be. I don't know how to get that broadcast all over, but uh, effectively, it's not too big of a deal uh, to have that larger screen right there and then the 360 right next to it. Um, in regards to the new digital chassis, uh, digital dash layout here. It does have CarPlay, but it's only wired. So you do have two USB-Cs right here. One's just a simple charging point, and then the other is the port for the uh, CarPlay there. You can still Bluetooth through the radio. I am kind of, you know, kind of set my way, so I prefer Apple Maps. You know, the issue with Apple Maps is it might tell you to do a U-turn where you obviously can't do a U-turn. It might run you underneath the bridge. So not everybody uh, should be using Apple Maps. I go kind of basically the same route, so I kind of know where I'm going. Don't fret about it too much. The biggest thing, safety-wise, uh, it does have adaptive cruise and does have crash mitigation. So it's going to give me a distance warning if I am accelerating too fast for the car in front of me. Um, you really can't disable any of that. Now I can disable the lane departure warning, which is right here. And then the other big thing to disable is the side collision. So it gets a little annoying at times. We're starting to get into relatively heavy traffic. So we basically under settings, we got driver assistance, side guard, then I'm going to turn that off. I'm just not a big fan of that. I can feel like I can see well enough to the right. A lot of people will disable that. Uh, now, if you disable the side guard, basically your, your blind spot monitoring, there is a little piece right over to the right, uh, that little triangle that would give you a visual alert, but what drives me nuts is the audible alert. So that will re recycle every single um, restart every single key cycle. Now the lane departure warning, I believe it resets every 15 minutes. So that's something you'd have to turn off over and over and over. And that's something we uh, do quite a bit whenever we're going through towns. Uh, just, you know, if you get a little over the line, it gets a little annoying. The other audible notice we're getting is through this Garmin GPS, which, uh, you know, the reason why they brought that in was just to be able to have an additional monitor. If you didn't want that, we'd easily take that out and hang another monitor up here, do a bigger monitor here. You know, there's lots of varied dependence on the Garmin itself. As far
far as the chassis, this is the 600 horse, the DD16. Uh, you could get that with two different transmissions c c configurations. Uh, sorry, I'm starting to get in traffic, kind of getting a little nervous. But uh, this is an Allison. Uh, this was a coach uh, that luckily we were able to get our hands on. This was the earliest, earliest XL we could get our hand, hands on. But it does have the six speed Allison. It moves, no issues there. Uh, it is available in the short hood. And then the, you can get the DT transmission, but in the future, Future, uh, you'll be able to get the 116 with the DT transmission. Right now, it's just the Allison transmission. So very easy to operate. Uh, probably the one of the most user-friendly chassis out there. Pay our tax to the great state of Indiana. Thought you put it right there. No, she lost it. <laughs> right here our little traveling companion Winston for some reason he thinks that this is the bank drive-thru and that they're gonna give him a treat Good to go. Nope, we're not. We might have to end the video right here. I'll try it one more time, but I wanted you guys to see the acceleration. So the Allison does have better acceleration off the line. It just doesn't have that um, in the hills. I mean, I'm basically mashing the throttle all the way down. Right out of the gate here, looks like the Subaru is going to beat us. So 42 miles an hour and a very little amount of space. So it just it's, shifts a lot faster with the Allison versus the DT. Uh, if you're not towing much, you're not in the mountains probably would never really know the difference I mean I, that's just my preference is the DT transmission but definitely off the line the Allison's gonna accelerate a lot smoother a lot faster as well probably doing a lot of this stuff that I should be doing while I'm driving so this does is telescoping kind of get that dialed in now in regards to the seats on the XL they basically took out the sear seat and then using the same uh, pedestals, it does have turning pedestals, it is air pedestal, but they designed this seat to kind of match the rest of the villa furniture. Uh, it is leather, it does have a heat feature within the seat itself. Um, doesn't sit as well as like the ISRI seats that I prefer. The issue with the ISRI, we can only get those in black, so just kind of varied opinions. Uh, far better than the old classic and Explorer seat from 22 back. I was not a fan of that. Really, I felt like it was a pretty darn cheap seat. Uh, there's a lot more support within this. There's just not as many features to be able to basically inflate lumbar. Lots of different functions and features within the seat. So, uh, just kind of preference wise, I wouldn't suggest changing this seat out until you got set in the unit for you know a trip or two and then make sure you're comfortable with them because it's not a bad seat it's just not my not my preference and it doesn't bother me that the seats wouldn't match the unit there uh, the rest of the upholstery in the back but everything else is very easy to access very easy to see um, kind of glad that i was able to scroll through that to kind of get a better idea because i didn't like the not being able to see vehicles far far back away from me if I can push this back up and I don't believe I have to get within the unit itself some of these the classics did have TomTom Tom GPS built in it but I don't believe that they optioned these trucks with the TomTom Tom GPS and 
so just particularly your GPS would be within this itself. Uh, there again, just you know, matter of preference, but we appreciate you guys coming out and checking out the video. Our good buddy Winston popped back down. He realized that he wasn't going to get a, uh, a treat from the drive through window there, but uh, we'll continue to do more videos on this XL. We're, so we're pretty excited about having it, uh, and everything worked out pretty well in that uh, we had to come get it ourselves. So it took, took a while to be able to get it. Uh, but glad that we have an opportunity to, to drive in it, stay in it. Um, we'll try to tag the two videos together so you can kind of reference uh, the initial walkthrough and then the drive along as well. And then we'll tag the third video once we do a kind of uh, final. Uh, I'm do a, a final. Shower, showers, shower will be a big deal with all the body sprays. Maybe I'll fall in love with that the over the top shower in the back. We'll be back in Texas today, Sunday. We'll be back in Texas uh, probably Tuesday. But um, if anybody is between here and Texas wants to, see, wants to meet along the interstate, let us know. Oddly enough, we have had some people want to take and meet us out on the road will be 44 well 57 to 44 but, uh, make sure you guys keep coming back like tag and subscribe